Once again, I want to welcome you to uh, Wednesday Enrichment. And we know that school is getting ready to uh, come up, and so kids are getting ready to go back to school. And so uh, we're going to gear our teaching and our enrichment toward uh, education and toward uh, school. Uh, this evening, I want to talk to you about parental involvement in, involvement in education. It is very important that parents get involved in their children's education. Education is so important. Spiritual education is important, and natural education is important. Is it, it is a door opener. Um, education is, is a, a vehicle and a tool by which every child needs so that they can have uh, an opportunity because education presents an opportunity. If you look at it and do it right and walk through it right, it pre presents an opportunity uh, for the children to have a successful life. I want to talk to you about a few tips. Uh, I want to talk to the parents. I want you all to be geared up. I want you to make sure that you are heavily uh, and seriously involved in your child's education. Don't just use school for a babysitting service. You know, you're at work and you're sending the kids to school and so they're out of your hair for X number of hours for five days a week. I want you to make sure that you are intentional when it comes to uh, you supporting your children. So we're going to get started here. And one of the scriptures I want to use is, uh, we're not going to turn there, is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 through 12 um, in the Amplified. It talks about instructions and laws and precepts and talks about how um, these words are commanded by God and that it should be in the parents' minds first and in their hearts and then they should teach them to the children. And so it sets up a foundation by which uh, parents should make sure that the kids are learning and being trained and being taught. And so you have to be taught by the ways of the kingdom and you have to be taught by the ways of this world because we live in this world and there's so many things in this world that we're going to have to be able to uh, understand and move and walk in in order to be successful. So let's look at these tips, parental involvement, involvement in education, tips for being uh, an involved parent. The word involved means that you are a concerned parent, that you're engaged, that you're on your child's side, and the child needs to know that you're concerned about what they do every day. They need to know that you're engaged, that you're interested, uh, and so they need to know that you're on their side because they go through a lot of changes uh, day in and day out. There's peer pressure and there's just a whole lot of things going on in these uh, institutions, uh, educational institutions that they need support in. So remember, as we go over this uh, list, that doing simply one of these things on this list make, make a difference or could make a difference in your child's academic progress. And when we talk about academic progress, we want our kids to do their best. You want to teach your kids and motivate them uh, and support them and encourage them and influence them to do their best. That's what you want to do. Uh, so here we go. Uh, one of the things, one of the tips uh, for getting involved in your child's education is making sure that you read with your children and talk with them about the books and stories you read. You cannot read. We cannot read to our children enough. We must read to them. They've got to hear us read. We've got to make sure they're reading. We've got to make sure that they're reading on their level. You have to understand that, in my mind, reading, I know reading in math is, is, is uh, pretty much tough. It's, it's kind of like the challenge for our kids today. But I want to submit to you that reading is more important than anything else because if you can't read, then you can't understand what, else, what it is that you need to do. You can't understand math problems. You can't understand English. You can't understand science. Uh, you can't understand anything. And it's going to be hard for you to be successful or anybody to be successful in life if you can't read. read reading, learning, and knowing how to read is a way to uh, gather information. It's a way of communication. Uh, there is so much in knowing how to read. It helps you with your spelling. It helps you with uh, figuring out things, analyzing. All of this goes back to reading. And so we've got to find a way to spend time helping our kids read. We have to read to them. I remember growing up, I didn't like it. I didn't want to do it. 
on Sunday evenings, I had been in church all day, but my mom would get Bible stories, and she would make us be still long enough, and she read to us. And so you'd be surprised when you read the kids, the pictures, or should I say the words that you read to them become pictures in their minds, and they just begin to, to blossom. So read with your children and talk with them about the books and stories you read. Another tip is to help your children work on homework assignments. Sometimes these assignments are, depending on what school kind of school you're in, if you're in magnet school, if you're in uh, these schools where they have, uh, you know, the, the, the academics are rigorous, then sometimes it's frustrating. It's sometimes it's frustrating these kids. And sometimes the kids need to, they need you there to help you, to help them with their homework assignment because of the fact that they need to, some of these assignments are very particular, and they have to follow a syllabus, they have to follow instructions, they have to follow it to the letter, especially when they're doing projects. And they are actually graded on, you know, how well they follow instructions, and they have to follow it to the letter. And so it's good to get involved uh, with your children's homework because it helps you to understand what they're going through at school and the things that they need to know. Now, I'm going to submit this to you, say this to you. If you're a parent and you haven't been involved and had much education for yourself, then what you need to do is you need to start educating yourself. You need to start reading. You need to start uh, gathering resources and connecting with resources that would help you to understand uh, subject matters better so that you can better help your child. And one of the good things that you can do, or should I say the wise thing to do, is you go right ahead and start working with your kids when they are in kindergarten. Start with them in kindergarten, okay? Uh, and, you know, we started with, with our son. Uh, he doesn't realize how many, how many years he's in college now, be uh, entering his second year in college. He doesn't realize how many years he's already been in school. We put him in we put him in K-3 a half a day, K-4 a whole day, K-5 a whole day, and then he went to first grade. And so it gave us a chance to realize that, okay, how do they, how do they start teaching at an early age? And so you have to see, you have to understand something that the way they teach children now and the information they have and the training and all that is different from when we were in kindergarten and first grade. It's a lot of years ago. So, so, so we kind of enter into the situation thinking that things are kind of like they were uh, when, we, when we were in the first grade. They don't even count the same way. When I was in the first grade, my mama had, we had, you remember the little bead, the little block, a little stand, and you had the color beads on there, and that's how you count. You count the beads in different colors, and you count, and then you move them to the side. That's how you add, and then you put them all up there, and you move them to the right or to the left, and that's how you subtract. They ain't doing that no more. Ain't nobody count like that. So you have to understand that the, the uh, procedures and the way they're doing things is different now. So the wise thing to do is find out how the teacher, and I used to tell first lady this all the time, we're going to find out how the teacher is teaching, what the teacher wants, okay? And then that's how we're going to try and make sure that our child understands what the teacher wants and how she's teaching. So it's a good, uh, wise thing to start off with them in, in kindergarten. And then go to the next step, start in K4, K5. I mean, you go, with, go through the homework, find out how they're doing shapes and colors and words and how they're adding and how they're reading. And you grow with them. You, In other words, you are in school with them. So when they go from K5 to first grade, you go right there with them. And, they, and, they, and in each year, uh, they, they learn it's a little bit more rigorous. It's a little bit more uh, involving. They're doing a little bit more more things because they're growing, okay? And so you grow with them. So by the time they get into fourth, fifth, sixth grade, you won't be out of touch. When they get into uh, uh, middle school, you won't, be out, you won't be out of touch. And a lot of times, kids are so smart. They're very smart. So they, and at that age, they're sucking up things like sponges. They're, their minds are like sponges, and, they, and they, just, they, they just get it. They get it, and especially if you have a good teacher. And so there's going to come a time when you start with them in those early, basic uh, ages, you know, in K-4, K-5, and first grade, by the time they get in middle school, they're kind of be on their own. They're, they won't need as much uh, assistance. They won't need as much of your help, uh, so much of your help. But you got to make sure that you start because if you get them uh, starting in a good foundation and then basically support them, support them in everything that they do. So we, we did a lot on it. We, we said a lot about helping your children 
uh, work on homework assignments. And then another one is uh, organize and monitor a child's time. Make sure that you are monitoring their time, that their time is organized, because they can't have free play and free, free time, you know, all every day, you know, after school. There has to be a time of uh, free play, and then there has to be a time where they, they, they come in and they do their homework. And uh, whatever you decide, it needs to be, you need to do the same thing every day. So it needs to be a routine that they are used to, that they continue to, to move through. Uh, it would be a good idea because if kids have been in school all day and they've been doing kind of homework, some, and some kids are different. Some kids, they like to come home and go and get their homework and knock it out, you know, get it out the way. Other kids, they've been in school all day, they're tired of school. So they need to play. You know, they need to get that playing out of there. And so, you know, I can remember my, my mom was a school teacher, so we always got home before she got home. So I had to get my playtime in before she got home because when she got home, it was time to work. So whatever works best for your kids, whatever routine you come up with, but it is something that you need to look at. So we need to organize. Remember, organize and then monitor a child's time. And so another thing is tutoring. Uh, tutor a child with materials and instructions provided by the teacher or found on the Internet. So you say, well, they don't, we don't have homework this evening. You always have homework. That's what we used to preach in our house. You all, did you go to school today? You got homework. Okay, you need to go over what the teacher taught. Uh, you need to move ahead on something that's going to come up later. Okay, uh, and then there are some things on there's some exercises uh, and some information on the internet that you need to be looking at because all of this is going to help you understand your subject matter better and it's going to also help you uh, to understand, or should I say, to move forward and make good grades because believe it or not. Our kids are not in school. We're don't, we are not allowing our kids to go to school just to eat lunch and play and socialize. They're in school to do what? Get an education. So it is not all right for them to make poor grades because that's not what they're going to school for. They are not going to school for, to, to make poor grades. They're not going to school just to get by. They're not going to school um, just uh, so... The, the, the truancy officer won't come and, and knock on their door and say, wait, well, how, come, how come you're not in school? Because at the end of the day, and let me tell you something, 12 years go by like that. 12, 13 years, they, they go by in a flicker. And you, you will one day be looking at your child, getting ready to make some decisions, going to college, whether it's business college or uh, whatever kind of college, two-year, four-year, you know, uh, tech college, whatever, they will be standing there on their way, and now you got to make a decision. Let me tell you something. You can't be overprepared when it's time to go to college. Everything that you've learned, all the training, all the, all the basics, all the things, uh, all the little intrinsic things and things that were small and seemed not to be important, but they were important, all the good habits and all of the things that you did, line upon line, precept upon precept, all of those things you're now going to need because they're going to show up in the child. And at college age, you either have it or you don't. You have it or you don't. You know, you have good routines. You have good habits. You have good study habits. Uh, you understand basics. It's either you have that, you know that, or you don't. And so that's why... You need to grow with your child and continue to, to organize and monitor their time. And then make sure that you always give them extra work. And uh, another thing is you want to do as a parent, you want to attend and actively support school activities. The teachers need to see you at school at some of the activities that they have. I know uh, at, uh, back at school my son went to, they used to have math and science night. In the school, for one hour, the school would be swamped, and they'd have different activities, and the kids would participate, and so on and so forth, and parents were all over the place. And it was, it, it's so amazed to me how, you know, in elementary, parents, they supported their kids. They were there. They were there on field trips. They were there math and science night. You know, they had PTSA meetings. They were there. And then, and then all of a sudden, I saw these same parents when the kids got to middle school, they were absent. It's totally AWOL. You know, you go into the lunchroom and, and we're having PTSA meeting. You have two or three teachers there and maybe four or five parents. Maybe out of a school of hundreds. 
Okay. And so we have to understand it is very important. Matter of fact, I, 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 it's been my experience that our kids need us more so in middle school than any other time. It is in middle school. They do pretty good in high school, but you still got to be involved, still got to be engaged. And then I, I was reading where they said, well, you have to be with your child and make sure that they are, you know, you do what you need to do and encourage them and get and, and these tips are for parents so that they can make sure they stay connected with their kids from K through 12. But guess what? Don't don't leave them alone in college. You know why? And, and, and in my mind, it's like college. I got to make sure. I've got to make sure that they do well in college. Why? Because college cost it is not free. I remember praying with our son, and I used to pray, Lord, thank you for a free education when he was in school, when he was in grade school. Thank you for this free education. You know why? Because I knew college was coming. So college is not free, man. College costs thousands of dollars. And they, and they, and they, send, you, they send you prices, and they charge you like you are a millionaire. You know, you look at those prices, those fees, and you like, I remember this summer, this, this, this summer we looked at, you know, looked, looked at, you know, doing a, a course, you know, in the summertime. And the college wanted twelve or $1,400 for one, one subject. Oh, no. No, no. And so what I'm saying is, is that we've got to make sure that we stay engaged with our kids because you know, I've seen parents where they just kind of leave the kids to, to themselves and, and they running through, they wasting thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars because the kids, you know, they end up not finishing college. They end up dropping out. They end up getting involved with all kind of stuff, sororities and fraternities and a whole bunch of foolishness that had nothing to do with school. Got to be careful. Got to be careful in all that. Be careful with your social life. Here again, when you go to college, that's your last chance. College, in my mind, is your last chance uh, to to impact your kids with education so that they can operate in the workforce and be competitive. Be competitive. That means that you've got to have, uh, have learning on the inside of you so that when it's time for interviewing and it's time for you to qualify for a job, that you have the back and pull that. We've got to make sure that we, com- that we prepare our kids. And um, I want to say this, too, that, you know, we have grandkids, we have nieces, we have great nieces and great grands and all this kind of stuff. And we've got to find a way to get involved. We've got to find a way to get involved with their education. And I know they're not directly our responsibility but we have a lot of free time we have more free time than the parents or the legal guardians and so we need to make sure that we get involved we need to get involved with their life understand this that these kids change they change they're not the same you know we sometimes we're involved as grandparents i can i'm going to say this because i know our time is running out sometimes as grandparents we get involved and aunties great auntie we get involved with our kids man and as long as we can kind of bend them and control them uh, you know, we connected with them because, you know, you can lead them by the hand and you can you can threaten them. You can whoop them. They two, three years old. You know, you don't have no problem with them. But these same kids, they grow up. Right. And they grow up to be middle school age. They grew up into teenagers and every child, including us, all of us, when we got to be teenagers, we start smelling ourselves. We started acting a certain way. We had certain attitudes. We developed and seemed like we were going the wrong way, according to our parents. And that is the time when we've got to make sure that we connect with them and realize that they grow up. That's why they are born. They they are born so that we can nurture them and teach them and train them to, to help them to grow up to be productive citizens. So they're going to grow up. That means they're going to get independent. They're going to have the same. They're going to have their own mind. And we can't disconnect with them or from them. That is the time when we've got to have patience and understanding. We have to love them. We have to make sure that we keep the main thing. The main thing, if we're going to encourage them, we've got to do it in the right way. If we're going to encourage them, we've got to make sure that we do it in a way that is positive. Don't give up on them because all of a sudden it seems like they don't want to do what you ask them to do. All of a sudden they grown now and they smelling themselves and you know you just go no we don't throw our kids to the wolves. 
we make sure that we stay the course because somebody had to stay the course with us. And they just going through phases. They just grow. We call that the growing pains. That's when every child is, is, is coming into their own. And they've got to learn how to take advice. And they've got to learn how to walk in wisdom. And they've got to learn what, what truth is. And they've got to, they've got to be able to uh, hear the truth and walk in the truth that they hear. They've got to be able to trust. Okay, they've got to be able to trust their parents. They've got to be able to, to get along with those who are instructing them. And one thing you have to understand about kids is that, you know, they're getting instructions all the time, all the time. And sometimes you have to be careful how you instruct them. You've got to make it fun. Sometimes you've got to make it, you've got to teach them when they think that you're not teaching them. You've got to make it fun. Because they go to school, they have an instruction. They're at home, they're getting instruction. Everywhere they go, somebody telling them what to do. And they get tired of people telling them what to do. How many of y'all got tired of folk telling you what to do? At the point of your life, some of us tired right now. <laughs> and so you have to understand that with the child. The child gets tired of you telling them what to do. So you have to find a way. And I know sometimes I can read my son real good because he kinda, he's kind of like I am. He's real quiet, but I can read him. And it's like, you know, I, you telling me, his body language tells me, you telling me enough now. I, I've had enough. I understand what you're saying. And so, you know, let's just, let's just do something else. So let's just, you just chill on this. I get that. And I understand that. And so I want to remind you, because school is coming back in, and we want to take special time to teach and to minister on this wise. Remember, there are tips. These are tips for being involved parents. Parents, we're talking about parental involvement in education. I hope that you have put some of these things to practice, and uh, we'll be back on next Wednesday to share with you again. God bless you, and thank you so much for listening.